Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's we're going to be reviewing the last generation Tundra. This particular one we're using in the video is a 2021, and it's actually certified pre-owned, but this is the last year of the last generation Tundra. And so we're going to see how well it's actually held up. We'll go over everything in today's video. Before we get into this, a big shout out and thank you to the Car Malone Toyota here in Draper, Utah. If you have some time with this truck, link to the website in the description down below. Link to my car buying guide as well. Let's get into it. Powering this is a 5.7 liter V8 that goes through a six speed automatic. It puts out 381 horsepower and then 401 pound feet of torque. And when it comes to fuel economy, well, my client here has uh, reserved the right to remain silent on that particular topic. It's not great. Before I move forward with this review, I do want to mention if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. Now I will say this generation of Tundra is not my favorite from a looks perspective. Um, the headlights, I mean they're not bad, but they are kind of a little bit dorky looking overall. And then you guys can see here with the grill, it's normal sized compared to a lot of other modern cars. At least this has fog lights and everything. This one's kind of more of a base trim, but I mean it's not terrible looking, but it, I don't think it's as good looking as the new one, but I know some people find that controversial. Now our turn wheel setup is 275 by 65 by 18 on the front and over in the rear. And you can see here with the wheels, you've got the metallic gray, which actually looks pretty sharp with this truck. Got the giant <laughs> I-Force badge there on the side, SR5 there on the back. And then here's a look at the side profile of this truck. It's actually pretty, again, pretty good looking from the side. I think it's the front that I'm not a huge fan of. Anyways, in the back, we've got a really cool setup because this is when the Tundra still had leaf springs. Good old fashioned leaf springs. And that's a nice exhaust tip for an SR5. Look how fancy that looks. Now the key fob is a little bit more basic with this package. Basically, you yeah, stick it in the ignition and all that. But before we get into that, let's quickly pop into the bed. Now it is dampened with the tailgate. It does kind of drop fast. And you can see you've got protection here from the factory. We also have storage in the bed, which is very interesting to say the least. Um, but lifting this up, pretty darn easy. You've got parking sensors there in the back. And so, yeah, again, the back end, not bad. I think it's the front that kind of, all the taillights date it, that's for sure. That's another thing. And then popping inside, this interior is held up really well. So it's actually soft touch here. Looks really nice. And then down below, it's kind of a little bit more basic, but still soft touch. And then tons of storage at the very bottom. But here are the seats. Nice cloth trim. Looks like you can pick it up. And then getting in, you just step up a bit. It's actually a ton of legroom back here. Wow. Nice fence there. And then headroom's also pretty darn good. And this, of course, leads us up front, where again, nice trim here. And then you can see all the window controls down below. We've got door lock and unlock, blind spot monitoring with the mirrors. Payload, 1270. Not the greatest, but you know. There's the front seat. It's actually power adjustable, which is nice. Got the mirror adjustment here as well for the rear window to open it. And then the dash, eh, plasticky, but looks good. And we of course have to stick the key in the ignition. It starts right up. So here's a quick look at the steering wheel. You can see we've got kind of more basic trim on the outside. A bunch of practical controls in the front, including our volume voice command controls, phone controls. This actually has adaptive cruise control as well, so it's got quite a bit. Regular stocks there in the back. And then look at this, mostly analog gauge cluster, which I think actually looks really sharp. These analog gauge clusters are aging much better than the digital elements, if you ask me. Um, but yeah, pretty straightforward to use. And you can see this one's got 42,000 miles. Just a regular old backup camera in reverse. And then very similar infotainment system to what we have in our Land Cruiser. Ours is a 2020. But yeah, I mean, easy to use, quick response time-ish, ish. But I like the finish and the physical controls that, and this is when Toyota was really high quality with everything. And then same thing for like the climb controls down below. It does have a traditional two-speed transfer case. You can see all the outlets and every, well, kind of can see the USBs down there. And then even the shifter just feels like it's gonna last. Let's see, cup holders there, giant center console. And big glove box as well. And then we've got a regular rear view mirror and then the window in the back. So the whole thing goes down. That was one of the cool things with the Tundra. And then when it comes to pricing, depending on the mileage and the year, a lot of these 
Tundras are selling, you know, like the newer ones like this, not quite original MSRP, but pretty darn close because people trust the reliability of these more than the new ones and well, let's take it out. Interesting place for the trailer brake controls. Okay, well, I guess we'll talk about visibility before we set off. There's over the hood, both the mirrors do a blast morning. Throw the rest of the rear. It's, it's good, it's normal pickup truck visibility. So I remember when the new Tundra first came out and I compared a new one to this generation and I don't know, I feel like the mentality was just different back then. It was exciting to finally see like a new gen Toyota, but, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a little bit of a cold or something. Now that the new Tundra and the new generation Toyotas have been out for a minute, it seems like that has kind of worn off a little bit. And what I mean by that is, I don't know, like the the new stuff, and this is with other manufacturers too, the new stuff does not excite me anymore. Um, it seems like just before 2020, everyone was like peak car. Like everything was just well built, modern tech, and now it seems like build quality's gone down. Tech is still there, but I don't know. This, this stuff is really exciting. And what I, what I think all the time is um, right now, a lot of people are buying 20 year old Toyotas, right? They're buying the 100 series Land Cruisers. Uh, they're buying the Tundras with the 4.7 V8s. And so I think in 20 years from now, I'll probably be one of those people buying this generation of Tundra, this generation of Land Cruiser. I mean, we already own a 200 series Land Cruiser, but maybe, maybe I'll buy like a cheap used one in 20 years from now, we'll see. Because I'll just say it, they just don't make them like they used to. This 5.7 V, it's great. Uh, again, we, we own that 200 series Land Cruiser with the same engine. It does have an eight speed, which I will say, I I do prefer that eight speed to this six speed big time. The six speed's not bad. It's just not quite as buttery smooth. The engine's still smooth, but the transmission's just not nearly as capable, I would say. Yeah, gear hunts a little bit. <clears throat> so, that is definitely one downside about the Tundra with the six speed. And the weird thing is, Toyota also has that five speed automatic that they used to have in the Tundra. And then they have, you know, still in the 24 Forerunners. Five speed doesn't gear hunt. I don't know what it is about the six speed, but the six speed just, and yeah, it doesn't know, it doesn't know what gear it wants to be in. Very strange. Sounds good though. It's got good power. But like I said, fuel economy, <laughs> the Tundra pleads the fifth on that one. So overall, this is holding up amazingly well. And I, I've seen, I've, I've, I've reviewed some <clears throat> of the new body style Tundras that have some miles, so like a 22 with some miles. This is holding up much better. And again, that's just, this is just kind of the theme with these new Toyotas. Uh, the, not this, not this, but you know, the Tundra after. They just, they cheapened the interior. And so, you know, with the cheaper materials, they just don't last as long. And the other thing is like, this is a base model and this feels less plasticky than a brand new TRD Pro. That's something that I think is disappointing. I mean, this is still a, somewhat plasticky, but still it's, it's, it's less cheap feeling, less plasticky than a new TRD Pro. I think that Toyota should consider doing a refresh on all their cars and kind of bring things back up to standards like this. I mean, again, it's not a perfect vehicle, but it's just uh, a different time. And I, I feel the same thing with our 200 series Land Cruiser. It's just, that thing feels like such a tank, so well built. And then the new 250 Land Cruiser is obviously a smaller vehicle, but yeah, it's just not, it's just not the same. So I think that these are going to continue to hold their value. And this is what I'm seeing across the board. You know, if you guys watch the channel, I reviewed uh, used 4Runner TRD Pro. The thing was basically the same price as original MSRP. Uh, I reviewed that used Tacoma TRD Pro. Again, that's almost two years old at this point and had 20,000 miles and that was still original MSRP for a used truck. So the Tundras, I don't think you're gonna hold their value as well as the Foreigner and the Tacoma because Tundras don't have as much of a cult following. 
but I still think it's gonna hold its value. And I think that <laughs> we're gonna continue to see this theme where literally, uh, this has 42,000 miles, a uh, used 2022 Tundra SR5 with this amount of mileage is gonna be less money than this from what I've seen on the market. So the market even says that they value this at higher amounts. So it's just, it's just interesting to see. So let me know what you guys think about this generation of Tundra. And let me know if you like this or the 4.7 V8, because I know a lot of people are team 4.7. I like the power of the 5.7, but the 4.7's a, with a five speed, it's very smooth engine, a little bit smoother than this, which again, this engine's great in the Land Cruiser with the eight speed. It's just the six speed, I think, holds this truck back a little bit. That's all.